today to uh, attend this presentation on uh, the purchase agent enhancement for Sage 100 ERP. Uh, my name is Brian Dunn. I'm Director of Marketing here at SWK Technologies. Uh, I'm just going to go over some of the logistics of the webinar uh, before introducing our speaker. Uh, everyone is in listen-only mode at this time. Uh, if you have questions, uh, if you can, please type them into either the chat box or the uh, questions in your uh, control panel for the GoToWebinar. And yeah, and we'll just answer those as they come in or um, at the end if we don't get to them as we're going along. So uh, presentation today is going to be done by Stacy Schultz. She's with uh, Synergistics Software Solutions. They're the author of uh, the Purchase Agent Enhancement for Sage 100 ERP. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Stacy. All right, I'm going to start today within the purchase order module. And within the purchase order module, when you have purchase agent installed, you're going to see a purchase agent icon in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click it, and it's going to bring me into my purchase agent screen. Within the purchase agent, there's only a few different options that you have the choice of setting up depending on what version you have. You can um, choose to search based on your economic order quantity or the quantity required to fill stock and demand and stock levels, and then whether or not you want to explode bill components. I'm going to go ahead and do fulfill stock, demand and stock levels as well as explode the bills, and I'm going to actually do it with MRP integration. So I'm going to say that, and I'm going to do it backwards in time because our data is a little bit older. So I'm going to have my MRP projection from back in 2010, and I'm not going to use a cutoff date. If you wanted to, you could use a cutoff date for the specific time frame that you want to look over. So if I wanted to look between now and the end of July, I could look at that time frame with putting in the 7.30 cutoff date. If I include lead times in that, it means that if you need it the middle of August, but it has a four-week lead time. You need it between now and your cutoff date, so it would include it in the list. If I take that checkbox off, it would, it would not include it in that list because it's not needed between now and the cutoff date. You can generate it by specific customers, sales orders, um, basically anything that you see on the screen. You can run a specific filter for it, um, but I'm going to generate it for everything. And it's going to go through and tell me everything that it was able to uh, find that we need to purchase. When I click Continue, it's going to pull up all the bill of materials that it's going to explode. And it's going to show me what I currently have on hand, what I have on PO or work orders, what is on sales order, um, what kind of MRP demand you have, if anything, for it what kind of work order demand if you're integrated with work order, so what your total quantity available is and what you need to make as far as exploding those bombs, because it will explode all the components of those bill of materials to show us what we need to purchase for those particular demands. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what it's generated. So what it's doing is um, you have all of your different items. Depending on what the warehouse is, you could have the same item listed multiple times. You can pretty much slice and dice this data however you want to take a look at it. You can look at it by a specific product line, a sales order, a warehouse, a vendor. The way I like looking at it is by vendor, so I can go out and look at everything that I need from one particular vendor and determine whether or not I'm going to be able to find it from with them. If not, I can go ahead and I can do a um, look up of the vendor, any alternate vendors that I have for that particular item. And if we have any, um, if we want to go to our vendor list, we can go, oops, let's clear that out and go to our vendor list. And we can go to the vendor list and choose whatever vendor it is that we want to change this, this demand over to um, for who we're going to purchase it from this time through. And we can choose whoever that is, and it will then put in the vendor. If we call it that vendor, we negotiate a better price. We can go ahead and update the unit cost associated with it before the PO is generated. If we want to put a particular demand on hold, we can put the demand on hold. 
um, if we want to look at what is creating this demand, we can go ahead and do a detailed drill down and see what makes up the demand. In this case, we have a sales order and a bomb requirement for the different quantities that are required, and it's accumulating those into what we actually need to purchase, as well as any uh, minimum stock requirements. So in this particular case, uh, we have had a, have a little bit of all the different pieces in play. And if you scroll across, you can see any work order sort shortages, MRP shortages, sales order demands, PO. So you can see it on the screen as well to be able to see a cumulative effect of what you need to purchase. If Let's go back into that for a second. If we're in this, we may want to drill into the inventory for this particular item to see what we currently have on hand and what all our supply and demand is, as well as if we have reorder points and minimum order quantities set up for this, how that's affecting the numbers. If we need to, we can drill into the inventory inquiry and see what the situation is everywhere else within the company and all our different warehouses for this particular item. Once we decide that everything on the screen is the way we need it to be, we can look on the bottom and see what the total quantity is that we're going to be purchasing and the total cost for that quantity. Once everything's finalized, we can go ahead and click the Create PO button, and we can create a new PO, add to an existing new PO, or add and put it on hold. I'm going to go ahead and create a new PO, and what it's doing is it's taking this information and it's taking us over to the purchase order module and creating that PO for us. And when I click Continue, the information on the screen, which is part of our work file, is going to disappear because we've taken care of putting it on purchase order. So it's basically marking it off our to-do list of something that we need to take care of. From this point, we can move on to the next vendor and decide what from this vendor we want to get. Or go back and take a look at everything in our list and resort it some other way, the way we want to take care of um, dealing with the demand of stuff that we need to purchase. And what it did in the background is it actually created the PO for us. Excuse me, i got to pull it back on our screen. So you can see what the PO that um, it just generated was. And what it's going to do is it's going to be the last PO in your list. So depending on how you have it sorted, it's going to show what that PO is. And if we go into the lines, it's going to be the five different lines that we had on our screen that we wanted to create the purchase order for. And it updated the unit costs or whatever um, modifications we wanted to make. One of the things that I forgot to show you if we go back into the purchase agent for a minute, let's get out of that PO. Um, if let's take a look at maybe this item is a good one. If we want to add additional quantity into that particular one, we can go ahead and and I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but there's gray fields. The first three columns are gray, and then it's white. Um, for the next three columns. And that means those three columns can be changed um, as you're working with your work file. So if we know um, we want to purchase additional quantity of this, we can go ahead and update that quantity, and it will honor that particular thing. If we go to, um, let's sort of vendor again and go into our United list. You can see that we've got I don't know, about 15 different items here that we're purchasing. If we need to, we can go ahead and do a show all. And what the show all is going to do is it's going to show you everything that you typically purchase from that particular vendor. So if you're close to a volume discount or free freight or something like that, you may want to look at something else that you typically buy from them and purchase that in addition to what you need to purchase for your supply and your demand. Um, any questions at this point? 
There are no questions showing right now. Um, hold on a second. Get this off our screen for us. Ah. Um, that is a basic overview, and I know it was quick and dirty, but um, if there's any questions or any specifics that anybody would like to go into, we can discuss it or we can. Uh, there was a, one question that just popped up. Um, yep. It said, is there any special installation uh, to do with this, or is it just like installing a module? It's just like installing a module. You literally run through a an EXE to install it. It takes about eh, 30 seconds. And then um, you need to get a registration key to activate it, just like you do with the Sage modules, and it will show up in your module or in your uh, purchase order folder to be able to run it. Okay. And was there any special setup required? Nope. Literally, there's three options that you can choose, and we have a user guide out there. Um, the quantity required to fulfill stock and or demand and stock levels, or the economic order quantity, whichever way you want to run it, and then whether or not you're going to explode bills. And then there's only there's one other um, setup thing that is in warehouse management. Um, oh, bear with me a second. Within warehouse management, you can go ahead and. Um, basically exclude specific warehouses. So if you don't want to include it in the purchase agent suggestions of things to buy, so if it's like an RMA warehouse or something like that, you may want to exclude it from looking at it when you make your files. You can choose to do that. So those are the only three, three things that are even options. Okay, and then the uh, last question here is, can you discuss pricing? Um, the pricing on the purchase agent, actually, it's probably easier to go out to the website. Hold on. There is a website out there called thepurchaseagent.com. And it's going to be a basic overview of the product, um, but then the pricing is going to be $14.95 with annual maintenance of $250. And then with work order integration, it's going to be $19.95 with annual maintenance of $375. Okay. And if and, people um, are interested in using doing some kind of trial of it, we can do like a 30-day trial with it so you can try it as well. Okay. That's all the questions I have here. And then um, I'll just add to that uh, anyone interested in purchasing can also contact Alex Mistoshkin at SWK. That's Alex at SWK. And uh, just give him a call um, at our toll-free number that's out on our website. Um, and uh, we can get you all set up with that and just coordinate the whole process. And that looks like the end of the questions here. Awesome. Well, if anybody has any questions, you can contact Alex, um, and uh, he'll be able to get all the answers for you, as well as any coordinate any um, trials or any of that kind of stuff. So, okay, I won't keep anybody else from their day. So, you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll, uh, well talk okay. to you all soon. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Stacy. And again, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their, their busy schedule to attend this uh, this demo of the purchase agent enhancement for Sage 100 ERP. Everyone have a great day.